Good morning, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Kwamea Ross, and today's my message is going to be called Stumbling Blocks. I'm going to talk to you about stumbling blocks. So first, let's talk about what is a stumbling block. Now, I pulled up the definition in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, and stumbling block is an obstacle to progress or an impediment to belief or understanding. Now, so a stumbling block can be something like a hindrance that gets in the way. If you have a goal or something you want to attain or achieve or something that you need to do, an obstacle is going to impede that. It's going to get in the way. It's going to try and hinder and stop and block you from reaching what your, your, your goal or attaining your success or whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. Now, an obstacle and an, an stumbling block can also be an impediment to belief or understanding. So anything that would dissuade what you're currently believing and anything that would try to manipulate your emotions or get you off track. For example, if you have to have faith, when we as Christians, when we believe in God, we have to have faith. We have to have faith that his word will come forth, that his promises will be fulfilled. And so when someone gets in your head or there's some type of fear or an emotion or something that would start to, to sway how you believe and how you think, that's a stumbling block. So a stumbling block can be created physically as a hindrance to stop you or it can be something that is inside your mind. So we're going to talk about different, different stumbling blocks because there are different types of stumbling blocks. And, you know, as Christians, when we want to have successful uh, life, in Christ and we want to get to the destiny that God has for us and fulfill our purpose, we have to be aware and mindful of these stumbling blocks and not allow them to hinder us. Now, let's talk about these stumbling blocks here. Now, the first type of stumbling block is very common. It's a self-imposed stumbling block. Now, basically what that is, is things that we've made an idol and a priority that turns our hearts away from God. These things can be money. They can be, you know, our jobs, our families, anything that we put a higher level of importance on, anything that's going to keep us from doing what God wants us to do. So let's talk about it. I'm going to be reading from Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 19. And I'm looking at the King James Version for this first one. It says here, They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. Now, that is the King James Version. Now, let's look at the New International Version because it does break it down a little bit more so it's easier for you to understand. And it says, they will throw their silver into the streets and their gold will be treated as a thing unclean. Their silver and gold will not be able to deliver them in the days of the Lord's wrath. It will not satisfy their hunger or fill their stomachs, for it has caused them to stumble into sin. So basically, what God is saying is the things that they kept their hearts on. This, this silver, they did whatever it was for money. They put more importance and more value into to money and silver and gold because that was their idol. And now God's going to deem those things worthless. So basically what he's saying is when you have placed a, 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 pre, a, a, like a priority or you have a precedence on something, like a precedent, and it's a pedestal in your life, that thing is not going to save you. When you get into trouble, God is the only one who can get us out of trouble. You could put all all of your care and all your, your trust into something. And, you know, it's up to God if that thing is going to work out or not. If you know there's a scripture in the Bible where this man said, okay, I'm going to save up all my treasure and tomorrow I'm going to do this. He's making all these plans. And God told him, you fool, I'm going to come, you wicked, this and that. I'm going to come and take your soul tonight. Meaning you're doing all this. You're putting all of your trust, all of your, your time, all of your heart and all your focus into something. And you don't know when you're, you're set to die. You have no control over your time, how long you're on this earth. And there are people who place all of their value and their success. They look at their success. They'll work and they'll do anything when it comes to money or, 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 or having their jobs and building up their careers and their business, but they have no focus on God and the things that he wants them to do. And by the time they've built up all this wealth and all these businesses, and if God comes and takes you, then what? That stuff's not going to save your soul. It is a stumbling block because it's causing you to err. It's causing you to stray and go against what God wants. And, and just because you're not physically sinning, you're still in the, in the Bible. If you're not fulfilling God's will, you're still out of his commandments. So that is a stumbling block. Anything that causes you to be out of the will of God or anything that causes you to go against his law and anything that causes you to sin and go against anything he wants you to do. 
So we have to be careful of the things that we place priorities on and, and make sure when we do things that is in the will of God that we're seeking him first. It says to seek him before we do anything, before we make plans to do anything because we don't know if those are God's plans. We're supposed to always stay in his plan. We're supposed to always stay aligned in his will. And the only way we can stay aligned in his will is by seeking his face. We're to pray and, and walk in the Holy Spirit. Even before you take a job, before you you know, embark on some type of business venture or anything else. I mean, any endeavor in your life that you seek to have, you're supposed to seek God first and say, Hey Lord, is this my, is this your will? Do you want this for me? Even when you're picking a spouse, because that spouse can be a stumbling block. If it's not the right person that God chose for you, it could be a stumbling block that cause you to get off of God's path. Now, so basically what God is doing is he's saying that, you know, these things that they put priority in, these things that they made their idols, who they placed an importance in, that they didn't do my will. These things called them to air. These were self-imposed stumbling blocks. So now, you know, the things that they saw that became their stumbling blocks are not going to satisfy them. That silver, they're not going to, the silver, they said, it's not going to satisfy them. They're going to go hungry. Meaning you can put value in your job, but it's not going to save you. If there was a famine today and you couldn't go in the store and buy anything, what is your job going to do? What is your money going to do? It's going to be deemed worthless. Your hope and trust is supposed to be put in God because we don't know when, you know, our situations and circumstances can change. Now, let's talk about here. I have another uh, verse here. It says, I'm um, looking at Ezekiel chapter 14, verse three, and it says, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of? of at all by them. So basically what God is saying is once again, any type of idol, anything that we place a higher value and importance on and, and, and compared to God, it has become our stumbling block because it's something that you're putting your trust in. It is something that you're putting more focus on. And it's like, you're going to stray away from God's will because your importance and loyalty now lies with this other thing. And God does not like that. That's why it says in the Bible, it strongly, you know, urges us not to have idols because idols can be a stumbling block. Anything that will cause you again, let's look at that, that definition of stumbling block. Anything that is an obstacle to your progress, anything that is an obstacle to your walk with God, anything that is an obstacle to you fulfilling God's will or, or causing you to believe a certain way or, or error and, and go against God's word, that's a stumbling block. So we're not supposed to have those type of things in our lives. Now, let's go ahead and look at the second type of stumbling block. So we looked at self-imposed things that we cause. Now, the other stumbling block are stumbling blocks that are caused by others. And this is very dangerous because there are a lot of people that will try to put stumbling blocks in our lives. And basically, these are things other people do to cause us to stray or err from the path of God. And sometimes people can do it knowingly. Sometimes they can do it unconsciously, subconsciously. Sometimes they're just being used by Satan and they don't understand that, you know, they're a hindrance to us. And this is why we have to know when people are, you know, not good for us. You know, if somebody's in your life and you know they're causing problems, you need to let them go. You can talk to them and and, and, and go over it and, and give them a, t a chance to change. But if they constantly keep doing this, you need to cut those people loose. Now, there are some people who are very accountable. And these are, you know, people who are in positions of authority who cause other people to stray. And we're going to talk about this. There's a scripture in the Bible. I'm looking at Revelations chapter 2, verses 14 through 16. You know, when the angels came to speak to the churches, it was uh, seven churches. I think it was seven or five churches. I need to go back and look at that. But we're talking about here when he talked to the church of Ephesus. And it was in... The book of Revelations, chapter two, verses 14 through 16, and it says, this is what the angels come to say to the church. God sent his angel to speak to the church of Ephesus, and it says, but I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. So, he's basically talking about, there are people in the church, this church is allowing people in the church to come in there and, you know, persuade the congregation to sin. They were getting them to fall into sin by allowing the doctrine, allowing the doctrine of Balaam, which is pretty much Satan. Anything, these are idol worshiping, anything that is not of Jesus Christ. They're allowing this, these religions to be taught that made the children eat things that were sacrificed to idols. And, you know, God had always strongly forbid 
you know, his children from eating anything sacrificed to idols, where that's not supposed to be done. They were also having them commit fornication. And there's sometimes you have to look at these seducing spirits that come out here telling you to do things that go against God's word. And when you're allowing that and you're in the church and you're allowing this doctrine to, to be held up in your church and you're condoning this kind of stuff and you're allowing the congregation to fall astray and be led astray by this, God's going to hold you accountable. So listen to what he said. He says, you caused them to do the things that I hate. And it says, repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. So God himself is going to fight against them. He's going to fight against those who are, he doesn't, he doesn't take it lightly when you present a stumbling block upon his children, especially when you're in a position of authority. When you're in a position of authority, you hold accountability. You're responsible for the people, the flock you're leading, your congregation. So if you're not teaching them right and you're allowing this, this doctrine and you're teaching them about things that, that are explicitly against God's word and stuff that God forbade in his Bible, then he's going to hold you accountable. And he came to this church. He let them know that, you know, you're doing these things. You're allowing this going to my church. And my people have stumbled because they're looking at you as an example. You did not correct this. You allowed this to go forth. So, yes, he says he's going to come after them. And here's another scripture which talks also about stumbling blocks. And it says here, Leviticus 19, I'm looking at Leviticus chapter 19, verse 14, King James Version. And it says, thou shalt not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but shalt fear thy God, I am the Lord. Now, when we're talking about deaf and blind, we're not talking about someone who is physically deaf or blind. We're talking about people who cannot they don't have the words to hear or see. They don't have God's Holy Spirit. They're not able to hear from God themselves. So they look to, you know, they go to the church and or look to other people who are able to hear from God until they get to that point. Those who are blind cannot see. These are people out in the world, some of the people out in the world. Now, if you're putting stumbling blocks in their faces and, and you're causing them to stumble, you're sitting and you're doing certain things and they're looking at us and we're supposed to be an example. We're supposed to be the light. If you know, you, we're the light of the world. We're the salt. We are the example for those who don't know God. It's like they look at us as the eyes and the ears and they get from us. When we're not walking righteously and we're not living an upright life and we're representing Christ openly, we're representing that we are ambassadors of God and the world looks at us, we're causing them to stumble. And it says here that we're not supposed to do that. Thou shalt not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but shall fear thy God. And when we, when we fear the Lord, we're going to walk in his righteous statutes. You're going to sit here and lead a holy life. You're not going to go out and, and, and curse others. You're not going to mistreat people who are of the world or who are not, you know, who don't belong to God. You're not going to go out, and mistreat them and abuse them. Do you know when you abuse someone, that is your testimony. You could have hindered someone from coming to God when you mistreat them. God cares about how you handle all of his sheep, even if they're, they're, they're not his flock yet. They're, 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 he created them. He laid down his life for every last one of them. Even if they haven't accepted his salvation, he still died on the cross for them. So he, again, when you do this, you're setting a stumbling block. This person might have wanted to come and give their heart to God, but now you have cursed them, you have sinned against them, or you have sinned in front of them, and you caused them to err. You mistreated them. So God does, you know, he doesn't take this stuff lightly. These are stumbling blocks, and we have to be mindful of that and be careful and seek God before we put stumbling blocks in front of other people. Now, the third type of stumbling block here is stumbling blocks that are caused by Satan, and Satan does cause stumbling blocks, and he often calls the stumbling blocks and, you know, the children of God and the saints, you know, and these are hindrances to keep us from moving in the will of God. Whether it's a thought he can get attack our mind or use other people, or it's just certain things that he'll put in our way to hinder us. And we have to be aware of these type of things and start learning the wiles of the enemy and being um, accustomed to knowing what his devices are so that we won't fall into any type of traps or temptations that the enemy puts in front of us. So I'm going to read here uh, the book from the book of First Chronicles, chapter 21, verse 1. And this is the King James Version. And it says, And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. So... And we're talking about the book in uh, Second Chronicles. And if you all know, I'm going to go and turn there now. There was this big thing in the book of Second Chronicles where David erred against God because he numbered, he took a census pretty much, of uh, the children of Israel when they were going to war. Let me see here. So we're looking at Second Chronicles. No, I'm sorry. We're looking at First Chronicles. Chapter 21, verse 1. 
and so it says and Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel now that's the first thing Satan's going to antagonize us Satan can use people around us to uh, antagonize us do things to us but we can't fall for that we still have to obey God because at the end of the day, God's not going to hear this excuse that, oh, uh, well, so-and-so offended me. So-and-so said this about me. So-and-so did this. We're supposed to stay in God's will. It doesn't matter what anyone said. So David was provoked and he did something against God's will. So let's continue to read here. And I'm reading verses two and three. And it says, and David said to Joab, and to the rulers of the people, go number Israel from Beersheba even to Dan and bring the number of them to me that I may know it. And Joab answered, the Lord make his people an hundred times so many more as they be. But my Lord, the king, are they not all my Lord's servants? Why then do my Lord require this thing? Why will he be, be a cause of trespass to Israel? Now, for a while I was quandering, like, why is this such a sin? Because David took a census and he wanted to number the people. But then God showed me, the Holy Spirit revealed to me that he was causing strife and division. It was causing, not strife, but division. He's div if you read back at verse 2 when Joab said, no, verse 3, and it says, when Joab said, Joab's questioning him now, and he says to him, are they not all my Lord's servants? So, when we begin to, and, and this is happening a lot in the church, when you begin to separate and, and cause divisions between people based on, you know, different things, it could be, you know, you know, different characteristics, it could be be based on different ideas or, you know, different demographics. This is separating the body of Christ. This is going to cause and lead to strife and, and cause a stumbling block because now it's threatening and weakening the kingdom of God. And so when David counted, see, Satan knew that God didn't want this. He knew. And, and what happened is, to make a long story short, there was a huge punishment. God gave David a choice. He gave him like three choices of the type of punishment he wanted. These were bad punishments. And David ended up choosing that he wanted a pestilence to come forth. And, and many men had died and lost their lives because of David went against God's will and took a census of the people. And God took it that, that he did not take that lightly. He was very upset. His, his wrath was ensued against David and he loved David. But when God is not going to allow you to cause division amongst his people, amongst his church, when you are in a church and you are openly, like as the body of Christ, when you're openly separating, whether it could be because of someone's skin color or someone's, the way they were raised or their different beliefs or how they were taught or the values that they have or whether they have enough money or they don't, now you're causing division and you're separating his body. You're weakening and, and putting gaps in his congregation and that when there's gaps and holes in something, it gives the enemy an opportunity to come in. It gives the enemy an opportunity because you're now tearing it apart. It's not, you know, consolidated because you're putting holes and tears in it. And that's what Satan does. He puts tears among the children because he wants us divided. He wants us separated. He wants us to fight amongst each other and to be divided where we cannot fight against the kingdom of darkness. That is the problem. And that's why it was such a sin because he said we're all, he said count this person, this country, they're all Israelites. Why are you dividing and separating? Like that's why he said, are they all, well, you're not all God's people. He doesn't like the vision. And so that was causing a stumbling block. Satan, David played into Satan antagonizing him. Satan provoked him and David fell for it. You can't fall for the things that the, the devil's wiles. Sometimes he's going to put things in your path to get you upset. I mean, a lot of times, sometimes I ride, drive down the road and, you know, someone will kind of get in front of me and cut me off and I'll be in a hurry to get somewhere and they start driving really slow and I know, I know it. It's like I'm accustomed to, I know that this is Satan putting this person here. And it's like every single time I'm like, you know what? I start praying to God and I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. They're going to move out of my way. But the, the devil wants me because he knows that this is something that triggers me, that I don't like that, especially when I'm trying to get somewhere. And he puts these people in my path on purpose because he's trying to set forth a stumbling block, get me out of God's will. Get me, now, see, if I, you know, what if I, I get out of God's will? Or what if you allow yourself to, to, to lose your temper and, and do something to someone? And, you know, that could have been an opportunity or maybe God wanted to use you to minister to that person, anything. And it's like, 
you let the devil antagonize you to do these things. We have to be mindful and watch out for the enemy and his devices and his traps that he sets for us when he's putting stumbling blocks around us and start to pray. That's why we're supposed to continue to pray without ceasing. Even before you get up and start your day, the minute you wake up and get your head up off that pillow and take your feet out of that bed, before you even take your feet off that bed, you're supposed to pray and seek God. Pray that he delivers you and maneuvers you from every temptation, every trap that the enemy is setting for you. That there be no problems, that there not be any type of stumbling blocks put in your path. That you won't fall for the enemy's devices and his wiles and his traps and snares. Now, and we're going to talk about the final stumbling block here. And there are stumbling blocks that are caused by God. Yes, God causes stumbling blocks. And usually... When people are in rebellion and God has given people a chance to, to, to change their ways, he's convicted them and tried to get them out of their sins and they want to continue to walk in disobedience. They don't want to trust God. Then God will sometimes put the stumbling block in their midst. And he does it because he's going to give them what they want. And this will lead to destruction. He puts it in their path. And, you know, God is not causing them to sin. God does not tempt anyone to sin. So we're going to go here and talk about it. Now, first, we're going to talk about how God puts stumbling blocks in people's way. And we're looking at the book of Jeremiah here, chapter 6, verse 21. This is the King James Version. It says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people, and the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them. The neighbor and his friends shall perish. So it might sound like God is being mean and wicked. And, and no, he's not. Because he's given these people time and time again to change their ways. They would not hearken unto him. He knew that they, he, they would not... They knew he was watching him, them. They would not change. They would not, you know, straighten up. They wanted to do what they wanted to do. So God says, okay, you want to do what you want to do? I'm going to give you what you want and it's going to destroy you. So he put the stumbling block in their path, but it was up to the people to either obey God or go in their own way. And they still chose to go in their own way. So therefore their stumbling blocks ended up destroying them. So let's read it. God does not cause anyone to sin. We can never say that God will cause anyone to sin. No, sometimes he'll move out of our way and let us have what we want. Or he'll put it there because it's like a child. It's like a, a kid. You say to the kid, don't eat the candy, right? You tell them don't do something or don't touch something that's hot. And, you know, or if they, they let's say they do it anyway. They want to be rebellious. So then what? They, they get the consequences of it. So that's pretty much what we're saying here. God is saying... You wanted to do this. I told you repeatedly not to do it. So now I'm going to put it right here. And if you choose to do it, it's there for you. It's accessible. I'm going to put it there and you're going to fall and you're going to stumble and you're going to be destroyed. And God does not tempt anyone. We're going to read here. He does not cause anyone to sin. It says here, and we're looking at James chapter one, verses 13 through 14. It says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God for God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So there you have it. God does not tempt anyone. He might lie, lay something there and allow us to get what we want. He might set stumbling blocks there, but it's up to us. When we are driven by our own lust, we fall into that trap. When you're disobedient to God and he keeps telling you numerous times, he's giving you many chances not to do something and you know it's not right and you do it anyway. Or if God puts it there, then he says, okay, have your way. But you're not going to like what happens. That's basically what it is. So we have to learn all these different types of stumbling blocks because stumbling blocks are set here to keep us from fulfilling God's destiny, from getting to the kingdom of God and from doing everything God wants us to do here on this earth. So in order to walk in success and be, you know, walk with the Holy Spirit and live a righteous life according to God and fulfill everything he put on this earth for us fulfill, we have to learn how to maneuver away from the stumbling blocks, how to watch out for stumbling blocks and not fall for those traps. And if you, you know, this is me summing everything up. Uh, if you are enjoying this message, I do encourage you to share it, you know, share it with someone who would, you know, who needs to hear it. If you feel that they would, you know, get something out of it, if it's beneficial information for them. I mean, these are messages that are Holy Spirit filled, you know, they are led and prayed over and led by the Holy Spirit. I'm guided by the Holy Spirit as I say these messages. And, you know, if you know anyone who could actually benefit from them, then like I said, feel free to share them and subscribe to the channel. There'll be a lot of more important messages going for it.